On The Real Housewives of Orange County Season 18, Episode 8, Tamara Judge put together a celebration inspired by the hit series, Traders, and it was an absolute hit. Tamara invited Shannon Storms Beater, Gina Kirschenheider, Katie Janella, Jennifer Pedranti, Heather Debrow, Emily Simpson, and former RKHOC member Vicky Gunvalson to her party. Unfortunately, my experience on the show The Traders was too short, so I wanted to have a Traders experience for the girls, Tamara said during an interview, and maybe just for me to relive it a little bit. Imagine this. Charming outfits, a Scottish setting, and rainy weather. All Tamara needed, then, was a host. The host picks the traitor for the entire game, you have to figure out who the traitor is, Tamara explained. There's missions, and you can be murdered. It's just a mind f game, is what it really is. Will could replace Alan Cummings' role for Tamara's festivities. Why? The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills alum Teddy Mellencamp Aroyev, of course. The group had a mixed reaction to this, but Tamara believed that Teddy would not disappoint. To get the game going, Teddy had the girls fill out questionnaires, which would determine who would be the deceiver amongst them. Teddy's poll included questions about the other women like, who is the biggest liar, and who is the most judgmental. Once everyone turned in their answers, the girls put on eye masks, pushed in earplugs, and then it was up to the host to make her decision. Teddy then started to walk slowly around the table, tapping a cane twice behind every seat. That lead up to one person receiving three taps, which determined the deceiver. The wives were then turned loose on the rental house to get drinks and catch up. Next, the host split the women in three groups to start a game of who knows the housewives best, which they played over dinner. During this game, the women guessed which names came up most for the questions earlier, Jen and Shannon's team won, and they received immunity. It could not be murdered by the secret traitor that first round. That meant the first person that was out was, no it couldn't be, Tamara Judge. The traitor, whose identity was hidden, had an interview of her own. What the hell, Teddy? She said, I pointed at Vicky to be murdered, to fix this problem. Teddy announced a second murder, Shannon. Then the group pulled out a piece of paper to see who would be dead next, which was Vicky. But who was the traitor? None other than Heather. And she was victorious. What a fun night for the housewives. Are you excited for Traitors Season 3? Sound off in the comments below. Allie Johnson loves reality TV. She can't believe she was able to find a job writing about it. Ali has been doing this for two years. Tamara judges Traders Party. A wild night on Real Housewives of Orange County if there's one thing Tamara Judge knows how to do, it's make a scene. Whether it's at a dinner party, a reunion, or, in this case, a party to end all parties. Known for stirring the pot and keeping things entertaining on the Real Housewives of Orange County, RHOC, Tamara's latest event was a carefully orchestrated chaos designed to call out the traitors in her circle. With her keen sense of drama, it's no surprise that she transformed what could have been a typical RHOC soiree into an unforgettable, tension-filled evening. Tamara's traitors party might just go down in history as one of the most iconic moments on the show, setting the scene. The party's theme from the moment the invitations went out, it was clear that this wouldn't be a regular evening of small talk and fancy cocktails. Tamra, with her usual flair for theatrix, opted for a theme that would not only get tongues wagging but would also bring unresolved tensions to the surface. A traitor's party. The idea was simple but sinister. In the world of ARC HOC, where alliances shift as quickly as the Southern California tides, Accusations of betrayal fly fast and furious. Tamara took these simmering tensions and turned them into the theme for the night. Guests were invited to dress as either traitors or loyalists, a move that forced the ladies of Orange County to make a choice, highlighting divisions and allegiances that had been bubbling beneath the surface all season long. The party decor was as dramatic as the theme. Tamara's impeccable taste, combined with a desire to push boundaries, resulted in a dark, moody aesthetic. Think dimly lit chandeliers, blood-red roses, and silver daggers as centerpieces. It was clear. This wasn't just a playful gathering. It was a battlefield disguised as a celebration. Every corner of the room whispered of betrayal, with cryptic messages and backstabbing references integrated into the decor. 
The tension in the air was palpable before anyone even arrived. The guest list, a recipe for Dramano Ard HOC event would be complete without a carefully curated guest list, and this one was no exception. The party was the perfect. Particularly those with unresolved issues. First on the list was Shannon Beter, whose strained friendship with Tamara had been a central storyline of the season. Though Shannon and Tamara were once thick as thieves, their falling out was legendary. At the traders' party would they make amends, or would the night take a darker turn? Fans were on the edge of their seats wondering if Shannon would embrace her role as a loyalist or come in full trader mode. Jenna Kirschenheider, Emily Simpson, and Heather DeBrow were also in attendance, each bringing their own unique brand of drama. Jenna and Emily, who have bonded as the newer cast members, were aligned in their skepticism of Tamara's motives, but Heather's presence was the true wild card. Known for her composure and often acting as the voice of reason, Heather's involvement in the drama would either quell the flames or ignite them. But the real question of the night, would Jennifer Pedranti, Tamara's newest target, show up, and if so, how would she handle Tamara's latest stunt? Jennifer's budding friendship with the other ladies, particularly Shannon, had made her a lightning rod for Tamara's ire, and Tamara, never one to back down from confrontation, would undoubtedly have something in store for her. The main event. Calling out the traders as guests began to arrive, it became clear that this wasn't going to be a laid-back evening. The tension was thick enough to cut with one of the decorative daggers. Tamra, dressed as a fierce warrior queen with a slay grin, welcomed everyone with open arms, but there was no mistaking the agenda. She was out for blood, metaphorically speaking, the party's icebreaker. A game that could only have been devised by someone with Tamra's knack for mischief. Each guest was handed a scroll with cryptic clues, each one hinting at a secret betrayal that had taken place over the past year. It was a scavenger hunt of sorts, but instead of finding objects, the women were tasked with finding traitors among themselves. Of course the game quickly turned into a confrontation. Jinna, never one to shy away from expressing her feelings, called out Tamara for stirring the pot with Jennifer. It's not a game if you're just using it to air out dirty laundry, she said, throwing a side-eye Tamara's way. Emily, always the voice of reason with a side of sass, backed Jinna up, noting that Tamara's history of playing both sides had made her the ultimate traitor in many of the women's eyes. Tamara, however, was in her element. With a sly smile, she turned the tables on Shannon, hinting that Shannon had been less than loyal in their friendship. If anyone here knows what it feels like to be betrayed, it's me, Tamara said, her voice dripping with dramatic flair. But Shannon, you know what you did. The room went silent as Shannon stood frozen, unsure of whether to defend herself or stay quiet. Betrayals and revelations the real fireworks of the night came when Jennifer confronted Tamara. After weeks of Tamara accusing her of being disloyal and stirring the pot behind the scenes, Jennifer had finally had enough. You've been trying to paint me as the villain since day one, Jennifer snapped. But if anyone's the traitor, it's you. Tamara, ever the master of deflection, shot back with her signature wit. I'm not the one pretending to be friends with everyone while talking behind their backs, she said, her eyes narrowing as she faced Jennifer. The crowd gasped, sensing that things were about to escalate even further. At that point, Heather DeBrow stepped in, attempting to mediate the situation. Ladies, this is supposed to be fun, she said, her calm voice cutting through the tension. But Tamara wasn't done. She had one more bombshell to drop. Pulling out her phone, she revealed a text conversation between Shannon and Emily, where Shannon had allegedly badmouthed Tamara just weeks before. You want to talk about loyalty? Tamara said, holding her phone up for the group to see, the aftermath. Friendships in shambles be the end of the night, the party had accomplished what Tamara had likely intended all along, shaking up the group's dynamic and ensuring that no friendship remained untouched. Jinna and Emily left the party even more distrustful of Tamara, while Shannon was left questioning her alliances. Jennifer, meanwhile, had emerged as a surprising force, standing up to Tamara in a way no one had expected. For Tamara, the traitor's party had been a success in more ways than one. Not only had she created an unforgettable evening full of drama, but she had also cemented her role as RHOC's reigning queen of chaos. With so many broken friendships and unresolved tensions, 
the aftermath of the party promised to reverberate throughout the rest of the season. As the